republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. several months ago when I was here um, without any revenue being generated at all from the landfill you need about a 48 percent rate adjustment um, if you were getting what you're currently getting from the landfill which we're not currently last year we we're getting from the landfill that would range somewhere from the hundred to hundred and sixty thousand dollar range you still were in the need of a 35 to 40 percent rate adjustment at that time even with the landfill what we suggested several months ago is with the unknown of the landfill and currently you haven't got revenue from them for several months um, adopting a phased in readjustment over 18 months about 15 percent each phase and if the landfill there is something to be worked out you potentially do start getting leachate back from them we would estimate you'd be able to drop the last phase off if the landfill doesn't get back online if you don't get a um, favorable agreement with them to start bringing leachate again you keep all phases all three Phases in place. I know when you talk percentages, sometimes the numbers can get lost, but just to give you an idea, some numbers here. An average residential customer, and we're talking their sewer bill only, we're not affecting the water bill with these adjustments. Right now, that average customer sewer only would pay about $35 a month. That's fairly low comparatively to the state average. Um, state average for that same customer is about $50 a month, so you have pretty reasonable. Uh, utility rates your water is pretty low too actually but phase one would increase that customer bill the customers bill about five dollars per month phase one we're suggesting would be effective in january of 24. then six months later um, effective in in july of 24 would be another increase it'd be about a six dollar increase to that same customer and then the final phase would be january of 25 um, would be an additional seven dollars so you can see it's a step up five six seven add-on so over 18 months, that customer, or excuse me, over 12 months, that customer's bill would go from $35 a month to roughly $53 per month in three phases. How That's for but how does that final figure compare to averages across the state? You'd be you'd be right about the state average for communities your size. Um, we do a survey. Actually, Tyler's the one that does it um, every about three years now of all the communities in Indiana that we work with. The last one we did was, I believe, 2021. So you'd be right above the average of 21, and it'd be 2025. So you'd probably actually be, by that time, we'll do another survey, you'd probably be a little bit below the average, to be honest, because everyone has a more pressure with inflation and everything going on right now. That's residential, so that's the vast majority of your customers. Again, um, about a five, $6 increase in each of the phases. I don't want to say that's minimal. I mean, that is 
going to hit people's pocketbook, but we're trying to phase it in so it's a little bit more um, palatable. And again, if we can get some revenue from the landfill, potentially you could shave off that last phase, possibly. But I, you'd be adopting them all at this time, and that would be future action. Your two largest customers on the sewage works is the school and Woodlawn Hospital. Um, the school right now, I obviously it fluctuates when students are in, students are not in. The school pays around $3,300 a month for their sewer bill, the average now over 12 months. They'd be looking at the same percentage increase, but it's obviously much higher dollars because they're using a lot more. So they'd be in the five to $600 increase each of those phases, okay? So it's about 10 times what the residential impact is, but the same same percentage. Uh, Woodlawn would be in the three to 400 range. That's your second largest sewage customer. So again, same percentages, 15% each phase, higher dollar amounts because they're much larger users. That's in terms of, you know, why the need. Um, I don't want it to be that it's strictly because of the landfill revenue being lost. Obviously, you needed a rate adjustment anyway, as I said back uh, several months ago. Um, and I know Shauna had to take a phone call um, your sewage works has been using cash the last several months. Um, we've been saying, you know, you're going to have to take action sooner than later. I would say you're within the next probably six months of having to do something and not having much of an option. Your rates just aren't set at a level to support your operations and capital needs at this point. In terms of public action, um, introduction of the ordinance is required. Shada has advertisements. One must run in the newspaper. One has to be mailed to any outside city sewer customer. She's got those all teed up, ready to go. And then I believe it's the 26th. Yeah. You have a public hearing set um, that evening. Anyone from the public can come ask questions, uh, make comments, et cetera. You cannot take great right action as a council until after that public hearing is complete. Of oh, December? Which of December. Okay. Yes. Any questions on the proposal? Ten days before your public hearing, right. in the newspaper and mail. Because okay, so sometimes we adjust our meetings. It was going to be December twenty-sixth. I don't know if we talked about that already or not. We did not. That's why I was wondering. But ten days is different than thirty days. Yes, the, the advertisement again. Shot can answer. Okay. She has it ready to go to the newspaper. So you guys have some um, requirements. How early it has to be, et cetera. If the twenty-sixth is going to change, you're not going to have a quorum. We would need to know that pretty soon because that date will have to be published in that advertisement. I know I will not be here on the 26th. And in the past, we removed that meeting earlier. So, Ryan, do you have any thoughts? So, we keep with Tuesday, we could move it to the 19th. Give us the 10 days. What's the it's time? It's a weekly time. time. Yeah. A weekly yeah. time. Yeah. So she should be able to make that work. She has it ready to go. She can send it. Yeah. So let's. Oh, she knows. Anyone have an objection to the 19th? I can do meter. Okay, so let's set it for the 19th. 6 p.m. Yep. So Tyler, can you get the shot on yep. and get that change made? involved in one meeting with Republic are those negotiations broken down or we're just there, not making any headway? There was a meeting um, several weeks ago. Um, the city has provided a couple of different proposals to Republic. They've came back with a counteroffer, maybe too hard of a word, but um, they've kind of changed the goalposts a few times, I would say. Um, I think there's something can get done there. I just, how hard does the city want to push at this point, I think is the question. And as I said earlier, their counter is not too far different than what you were getting previously from them, so it doesn't necessarily change. You know, they shave 10, 12% off the rate adjustment. It's not a hugely material impact. Um, I guess I'll summarize this. There's no magic bullet to this. 
you're going to have to do something with the rates, and even if Republic comes back, you're still having a fairly material increase. That the outside customer go out yet, right? So there were no, we were going to get that out this week, so, okay. so we need to change that date. Uh, okay. okay, so December 19th. Do you have any questions? Uh, we'll be here on the 19th as well for questions and answer for the public. <laughs> yep, they always are. Okay. Um, another new business is the amendment to the water tap fees and have an ordinance in front of you. Manage everything on that shot up. On which one? The water tap fees? Yeah, water tap fees. No, that was a, an approval from the water board. They okay. made the adjustment and it just needs to be, the ordinance just needs to be amended to reflect that change. Jump the public hearing, so we'll go back into the public hearing. Go ahead and open that up on the amendment to the Fulton full, the County Zone Ordinance, Subdivision Ordinance, and Zone Map. Um, was Heather coming? Heather is not. She is still out. So Kim, okay. Kim's here. Okay. <laughs> you have the floor. Okay. So I'm um, just going to run through these. If you have questions, please feel free to ask. Our fees schedules are going to change a little bit. Um, how we do things, our solar array is, um, we're under a farm moratorium right now. So we did not, uh, we can't have a solar farm come to Fulton County until we, at the first of the year, we'll work with our plant commission board and start writing an ordinance for it. As that takes place, those um, fees will change um, for our solar arrays. Um, we are doing we are changing how we are doing the bzas instead of having the applicant send out all notification to the sentinel and all interested parties i will do everything in-house it saves me the hassle of calling and do you have this and trying to track down our information to have these meetings so the cost will go up to 250 dollars and i'll do all paperwork in-house uh, it's about it for our fees we are adding EV charging stations. I know you all saw one go up uptown here by the um, what used to be a big R. Um, so we're adding level one and two as permitted uses in all districts. Those are your like your home use EV charging, something to that of that nature. They're a slower charging unit. Level three is permitted in highway commercial and general commercial, and it's special exception in all other districts. Um, and then a couple just maintenance things we had to do in the highway commercial district, many storage and warehouses were, also were permitted and special exception. They were moved out of special exception and just a permitted use now. Um, in the IR district, um, landscaping is no longer required around the airport. They're not allowed to have landscaping, so instead of them coming in for a variance every time, they are no longer required to have landscaping at the airport. Um, retention ponds here in town we got a couple of them that um, um, are under need of maintenance that is now added into the ordinance to maintain those um, retention ponds if they are not then we can treat them as um, any other violation and they'll start getting letters and somebody will have to maintain that um, we had a training session with KK Gearhart Fritz and she uh, pointed out some Again, just general maintenance corrections I needed done in the ordinance. Uh, we made those corrections. Um, solar requirements. We have changed medium and large roof mount only to require TRC and no longer is required as a special exception. Because when they do a roof mount solar, they are required to give us a structural um, engineer report that that building can withstand the weight of those solar panels. So all that's already in there. Um, and they're not taking up any more land on the, uh, any more space on the ground. So it's just required um, a TRC now, so uh, we, the different departments can go over and make sure that it's okay for that area. 
Um, we're changing um, in Article 5, 7.1, that it says no accessory structure allowed without a primary structure that has been removed and it has ch been changed to accessory structures must relate to the primary structure and its uses. Kiwana um, asks us to require that all fences um, require a location improvement permit and have to sit two feet off the property line, whereas before they did not require any permits because Kiwana did not take on our building codes, so now they've asked us to add that in there. Um, so in the, uh, let me see here. For the subdivision ordinance, all new residential developments um, of four lots or more must be within uh, walking distance of a park, recreation area, or open space. That is part of our comp plan, so we added that language in there. So um, with four or more lots shall offer uh, open space within 10 minutes or walking distance of a park, open area, something, some kind of open space for them to have. Some zone map amendments here in town. Liberty Baptist Church um, right now is suburban residential, so it doesn't really make sense for them. We're changing them to um, IR, which um, is just more conducive to what they need over there. Um, in Fulton, where the new Dollar General is going in, that area in there, we're changing from suburban residential to um, downtown commercial. It does not change any of the uses over there. It, again, it just makes it a little bit easier um, for that that store there to be able to do what they need to do over there. And then here in town, over on 9th Street, um, so there's several lots over there, um, right by the train tracks there. Um, they are, the, the green area is not changing their zoning. They, they chose not to, but from um, Jason Hudkins, where he owns that building there, that area all in there is going to get changed um, from IN to general commercial because it's not intensive use over there really, uh, or industrial over there, so we're changing it to general commercial, again, to be more conducive to what the needs are in that area. Um, I believe that's it. Do you have any questions? Questions? a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Alright, thank you. Alright, um, everyone get uh, Mayor Denton's Apache drive update. Mm -hmm. He did send oh he sent one? Yeah he sent one. Okay. Yeah. We are on the schedule on these things are moving along. Okay. Any questions? Okay, um, ordinance, ordinance 7 2023 and ordinance 8 2023. We cannot pass tonight, but we can do the first and second reading. So that in the meeting, that we only have to do the final reading on that. And these are pertaining to what Eric was talking about from Baker Tilly. So I want to entertain a motion for the first reading of. Ordinance 7 2023. So moved by title only. Thank you. It's been moved. Wait on a second. Second. Thank you. All right, moving second out to read the first reading by title only. All in favor? All right, ordinance number 7 2023, amendment to water tap key ordinance. Entertain a motion for the second reading of ordinance number 7 2023. So second. Second, all in favor? All right, ordinance number 07 2023, amendment to the water tap fee ordinance. Mm -hmm. okay. So I refer to the second. I'm going to do the same thing on ordinance 8 2023 and for the sewer rates. Entertain a motion for the first reading of ordinance number 8 2023 by title only. So moved. Second. All right. Second. All those in favor? 
Ordinance number 8-2023, sewage rate ordinance, an ordinance amending ordinance number 02-2021, fixing the schedule of rates and charges to be collected by the City of Rochester, Indiana from the owners of property served by the sewage works of said city and other matters connected therewith. All right, entertain a motion for the second reading of ordinance 8-2023 by title only. Second. Move and second, all those in favor? Ordinance number 8-2023, sewage rate ordinance, and ordinance amending ordinance number 02-2021, fixing the schedule of rates and charges to be collected by the city of Rochester, Indiana, from the owners of property served by the sewage works of said city and other matters connected therewith. Okay. On to ordinance 9-2023, move to the purchasing policy. Shout out you, have anything for us on this? Uh, just that it was recommended, um, Baker Tilly actually had recommended that we revise because they haven't been revised since the 70s, 80s, 90s, some of our policy, and also State Board of Accounts. Of course, obviously, we follow State Board of Accounts uh, recommendations first and foremost. Uh, so these policies actually are just that. They're updating our current purchasing policy, the capital asset policy. And setting the thresholds at the state board of accounts for elevated levels and bigger tools. Okay. Um, any questions on that? Entertain a motion for the first reading of Ordinance 9 2023. Keep in mind this is seven pages long. I <laughs> <laughs> didn't have, there was only one tonight that was only a single page for you. Sorry. No, you only gave me one page. Did that intentionally? I know. <laughs> so but if you like all of them. Another move, motion to read by Ted Long. Second. Second. All's in favor? All right. Ordinance number 9 2023, Amendment to the City of Rochester Purchasing Policy of Ordinance 22 1998. Any discussion questions? Entertain a motion for the second reading of Ordinance 9 2023. So move by title. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Ordinance number 9 2023, Amendment to the City of Rochester Purchasing Policy and Ordinance 22 1998. <coughs> Entertain a motion for the third reading of Ordinance 9 2023. Can we do title only? You can do title only on all three if it's you need to. Does, does it hurt anything to wait until the next meeting for this one? Just I was going to say, it's, there's not a. I mean, that's just stuff to get the state code. So, so we put title on. Second. Move and second. All those in favor? So, because it wasn't unanimous, can we do title only? But he put third, did you put, was that a vote for third reading by yes. title only? Yes. Okay, but the vote for third reading by title only didn't pass. Then someone can make a new motion to read it in its entirety, or you can, uh, uh, some, you can entertain a motion to, uh, um, well, you've had two readings. You, you, it automatically is safe for the next meeting, third reading, if there's no other motion. motion or should we just push push it to the next meeting now i want clarification the next meeting in its entirety is being moved to the 19th, to the 19th. Okay. so the one scheduled for the 26th we're bumping it up to the 19th yes. the whole meeting. so that means your public hearing on the two or is going to be that same night yes so most likely you're going to have a crowded room yes so just keep that in mind as far as the length of time you want to be here no good till christmas Till Christmas. <laughs> 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 All right, then there's 26 to recover. Yeah. Well, there you go. Ordinance number 10 2023. Uh, entertain a motion for the first reading. And what is this one? Shot? This one, it, it basically the same thing. This is the capitalization policy. So this amends currently our capitalization policy, sets everything at $1,000 and at a minimum. So it's bumping it up to five and then stipulating each of the classifications because we have different classifications for capital assets. You've got your real property, personal property. So it just actually identifies those more clearly in our policy. Uh, a lot of it is for the economic development moving forward. Uh, we've got to develop uh, 
the city will need to develop a plan, an economic development plan that hinges on having these policies ready and in place to go. And Mike will need that for some of his work that's coming up with ready as well. Okay. So moved by title only. Second. Moved and second with all those in favor. Ordinance number 10-2023, Amendment to the City of Rochester Administrative Capital Asset Policy, City Code 35.3, and Ordinance 17-2002. Any discussion, questions? Entertain a motion for the second reading by title only. Second. All those in favor? Ordinance number 10-2023, Amendment to the City of Rochester Administrative Capital Asset Policy, City Code 35.3, Zero and ordinance 17 2002. Uh, entertain a motion for the third and final reading of ordinance 10 2023 by title only. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Should we table this till next meeting as well? Again, for the month of October, Stretcher Cars, one in the city, one in Richland Township, two in Newcastle Township. Mutual Aids, one in Henry Township. Auto Fire Alarms, two in the city, two in Rochester Township. Calls for Smoke, two in the city. Accidents, one in the city, six in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township, two in Newcastle Township. Medical Assist, 13 in the city, five in Rochester Township, one in Newcastle Township, three in Richland Township. Lift Assist, two in Rochester Township. Gas Leaks, one in the city, one in Rochester Township. CO checks, one in the city, one in Newcastle Township. Canceled calls, two in the city, two in uh, Rochester Township, two in Union Township. Should total 55 calls, and we conducted one night of training for drill. Depending on your questions, that concludes my report. Any questions? Thank you, Chief. Chief Shots. Uh, for the month of October, we had 18 accidents. We issued 76 warnings over 43 offenses, 21 case reports, 490 calls for service, 25 blackouts, three towed vehicles, and 12 people incarcerated. And then you have the crimes. <clears throat> Those people are allowed for. Uh, Jonathan Easter, who is the newest possible officer, we made him a conditional offer. He goes down to public safety medical on Thursday for testing and evaluation. So if everything goes well, I'm hoping the beginning of the year is when I'll actually see his first day on the road. Um, and then I had a citizen. Do you want to talk about that? Um, Mike Gerhardt. I had Mike Gerhardt called me <clears throat> about the possibility of creating an ordinance, uh, basically banning Jake brakes on semis. Um, so he offered to show up and speak to you guys on on that, so I'll turn it over to him if you guys want to listen to that. We recently bought a house, 1113 Main Street, next door to Pizza Place, and we're remodeling it. We're going to make an Airbnb out of it. Well, as we're working there all of last year or so, and this summer, you would not believe the noise that those guys make when they hit those exhaust brakes. Now, usually an exhaust brake, but I understand, it's usually when you're going down big hills, so it doesn't hurt your brakes. But if you're going 30, 35 mile an hour in town, there's no, you know, incline or anything. But I think a lot of them just do it so you hear things rattle. I mean, if you ever get a chance and want to go, just sit downtown one day and you will hear. It's not only there, I think it's on all edges of the town because when they come in, uh, I live over a little town of Akron and they've got an ordinance they've had for years. Silver Lake's got one, an ordinance. So it's nothing new, it's just something, uh, when I talk to Shanti, he goes, nobody's ever complained about it. Well, uh, maybe they're just used to it, or maybe they're in their, in their homes, and their you know, windows are all up and they don't hear, but uh, it really, really shakes around and rolls. So uh, with our Airbnb, it'd be nice that when people come to stay, uh, they can get a good night's rest, or you know, enjoy the day there, stay, without having that kind of noise. Uh, my wife was out at the beauty shop at uh, across from Shepherd's the other day and a gal says, why do those guys make so much noise? And well, they think they're saving on their brakes so they use their exhaust retarder. Uh, I think Tom's got an exhaust retarder on his fire truck. 
I do. They're, they're not that They're loud. nothing like the, the Jake break. Uh, the Jake break is just, I think it opens up something, closes the valves, and let all the exhaust go out through the. But it'd be nice if you looked at the ordinance and maybe get some more information from the public. Uh, something to look at. I can get a copy of Akron's if you want mm -hmm. to review it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Any questions? Thanks. Thank you. Randy's not here. Sean is 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 here. Sean and they'll be back to the east side of the lake tomorrow to finish up. So um, the change that we made to the ordinance seems to, there's no adverse effects that I know of right now. We won't know dollars-wise till we finish the season and see what the impact is. That's what we're just kind of waiting to look at. Um, but so far it was really, there was an incident with um, one of the Piece of equipment, they were pulling leaves up and it stuck up the paper stone and damaged the impeller. So he had to deal with that. And I think he'll be here in one of our meetings to explain this to how that happened. Sucked up the paper stone? Yeah. I'm not sure if it was a, someone had raked the leaves up and they had them around a tree and the leaves were up there and they were pulling it, pulled one up and then I think it was about $3,000 for that impeller to replace. So Okay. Um, <clears throat> boards of committees. Harry's not here. David's not here. Ruth's not here. Fedco. Michael, did you have anything to share? Yeah. Um, the housing study has taken second place for a while to uh, Ready to, which I'll get into in a second. Um, we're in the process of contacting contractors to see if they're interested in taking on projects. We haven't identified any sites yet or anything like that. It's also the holiday season, so things are slow. Uh, no problem with that. Um, moving on to Ready 2. Uh, there's a meeting tomorrow in Kokomo. Um, we're meeting every two weeks down there and identifying projects and such. Um, we've gone from 60 projects down to 30 and now the six county region wide, we're down to 20 projects. Um, Rochester and Fulton County, we have thrown out eight projects and collapsed them down to four, uh, realizing that four of them could fit into a bigger one. Um, the first thing that we're going to shoot for is an industrial park. Um, we've been working on that quite some time and, and this is the time to go for something. Uh, it will be only for infrastructure, it won't be for buildings or anything at this point. Um, another project, and this is not in order uh, of preference or anything, is uh, the hospital has requested a mobile clinic for Kiwana and Fulton, uh, which would visit both cities two times uh, a week. Uh, and we felt that that was uh, important. The reason I'm saying that is um, Ready 2 is more for regional projects than for a specific city or county project at this point. So we want to impact not only the region, and we felt that um, that particular project, if they go into the smaller towns, that people from surrounding counties gives them a chance where maybe that will be closer than going to a hospital in their own county or something like that. Um, let's see, so there's the industrial park, there's, uh, uh, oh, there's a learning center, uh, career center type of project that the school system wants, and since child care really is very, very critical, and it's growing more and more difficult every day, literally, uh, we felt that that was an important project. And the fourth one that we're going to shoot for is a really, I'll call it massive, um, downtown improvement process. We're going to ask for money to fix facades, buildings in any way uh, that need it, roofs, walls coming down, things like that. Um, 
and um, at this point I have 16 buildings that are being involved in that particular project and so uh, I'll wrap up by saying I can't give out any names or anything but I'm working with three companies who are interested in coming into Rochester thank you any questions Bobby, you have anything for the park board? Yes, they met uh, a couple of weeks ago. They, they did get their golf carts. They've uh, basically are doing routine maintenance. <clears throat> they got into a pretty good discussion about the cart paths, wanting to figure out uh, whether to repave those. Uh, pretty expensive uh, project, possibly, that they might be looking into. At the very least, grinding down some of the places where the that were teed up, uh, so hopefully it doesn't do damage to the new cards. They're redoing sponsorship shine, signs. Uh, they've got, sounds like kind of a mess with the smaller windows in the pro shop. Uh, they got 20, they, they're rotting out, so they got, as I understand it, so 21 little windows that they're worried about uh, getting that fixed. They're looking into fees for carts. I think they're gonna leave the green fees the same next year. Wayne reported at the parks that the picnic tables and trash cans have been picked up. They had a chance to order, I think, get a decent deal for chemicals from Spears for the pool next year. So I think they went ahead and ordered that. There was also a pretty good discussion about the beach area and the, uh, the sand there that uh, uh, desired to freshen that up. I guess that was a 2009 Leadership Academy of Project uh, at that time that kind of got that going. And as it turns out, there's a group at Leadership Academy that is interested in trying to help seek permits to the DNR and do a lot of the legwork um, and plans for that park. So more to come, and I think that group's going to come to their park board meeting this in December. Any questions? Bob? Okay. Thank you. BZA uh, did not meet in November because uh, lack of a quorum. But, um, they have to meet in December. It's scheduled for the 27th. That they're trying to figure out if they're going to have a quorum on it. There is a petition in front of them that they need to act on uh, this year yet. So there'll be a meeting, but uh, right now it's scheduled for the 27th. Council on Aging met yesterday. It was a relatively short meeting. Uh, trips are substantially up from 2023. Uh, in 2023, over 22. Uh, they did have a couple of drivers out with COVID in November, so uh, they still average over 100 trips a day, even with the uh, uh, lack of drivers. But other than that, any questions? That's the report. Any questions? All right, thank you. Todd, do you have anything for solid waste or animal adoption center? Yes, uh, we did have a meeting for animal adoption center. Uh, gave a report on September and October numbers. They adopted out 114 animals in September compared to 98 last year at the same time. 84 in October compared to 67 last year at the same time. Uh, they are they set their new budget at 348,000, which they think is reasonable to make with the new vaccine clinics that they've been doing, uh, picking up a lot of funding from that, and they are working to purchase a new van. They will be using to pick up and distribute. So they'll be fundraising for that soon. Solid waste I was not able to make, so I don't have a for that. Questions for Todd on the Animal Adoption Center? Brian, you have anything tree board EMS? I do not. Good. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Does tree board meet in December? December? Andy, did you have anything for legal? As far as I know, yes. Uh, just resolution 
2023. Uh, the report that Kim gave is is uh, for amendments to, uh, for uh, the zoning uh, uh, ordinance, but the way that process works, because if it, it's an intergovernmental thing, you need to pass a resolution to approve that and before those uh, uh, can take place, because it's both a, both a city and county venture. Okay. So let's take care of that. Um, entertain a motion for the reading of resolution 8-2023. So moved. Is that by title only? By title only. Thank you. Thank you. Second. All right. First and all in favor? Resolution of the City of Rochester adopt amendments to the Fulton County Zone Ordinance, Subdivision Control Ordinance, and the Zone Map. Resolution 08-2023. Entertain a motion for the adoption of resolution 8 2023. So moved. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Thank you. She printed that up front back and signature lines are on the back. Yeah, there's only four. Right. Maybe Marty doesn't get signed. <laughs> yeah, Marty got it. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Do you have anything for 88? I do not have any updates on 88. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Second, all in favor? Thank you.